I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Poultry Health Today, and with me is Abigail Reith. She is a technical services veterinarian at Zoetis. Nice to meet you, Abigail. Thanks for having me, Joe. Sentinel birds, <laughs> they are frequently used um, in the poultry industry to get a better handle on infectious bronchitis serotypes. Can you walk me through that process? How, how exactly does that work? Okay, so in my project, what we did is we took um, 100 sentinel birds is what we called them. So they were called byproduct actually in this study to where all they received at the um, hatchery was coccidiosis vaccine. So these sentinel birds had no bronchitis vaccination at all. And we took them to another facility where we reared them with no poultry contact. So at this point we're thinking these 28 day old birds have not been exposed to any sort of bronchitis and we can place them in a house and look for active infection floating through the house by processing them seven, 11 days later. And so the idea is to place naive birds in an environment where they are exposed to what's in that house so we have an idea of what is in that house at that time period. Now, I know poultry companies have been doing this for a, a good number of years. Uh, tell me about your study. What specifically were you after? Okay, so my study was infectious bronchitis virus looking for serotypes in Northwest Arkansas. We knew that um, potentially we had a new serotype floating around, so we wanted to use the sentinel birds to see if we could isolate that, see if we could identify it in the broiler breeder houses. And our study, we took the samples and did a generic PCR bronchitis test on these sentinel birds tracheas after necropsies and ran a yes or no PCR for bronchitis bronchitis and so once we found out that yes all of these sentinel birds were positive for bronchitis we could follow that with PCR testing that's targeted to different serotypes so that allowed us to look directly for what we were trying to kind of fish out then what do you do with all that information because it's <laughs> got to be mind-boggling you've got all these yes. serotypes floating around and you have to carefully choose your battles yes so the first thing that um, we did and I did was compare it to the vaccination protocol. So you want to see, are we pulling out vaccine or are we pulling out a field challenge that these birds are not being vaccinated for? And so we look at those, we see the prevalence, the viral load that was there and discuss with the complex and the company that we are working with um, what we think that their birds are being exposed to and maybe make adjustments in vaccination to help protect. What else are you finding with infectious bronchitis? I mean, obviously vaccination is going to be a big part of managing that disease, but um, you know, they, they've done studies with uh, uh, ammonia, for example. I know ventilation is a yeah. big part of it. Um, what else are we learning about infectious bronchitis to help manage it better? Yeah, it's definitely, there's no silver bullet to control it. And like you mentioned, house management is just very critical in the control with the accurate ventilation, keeping the environment correct the ammonia levels down as well as vaccination is really what we can do at this point and harp on biosecurity and hope that people can stick to the rules and not spread the virus around. How do you go about making those changes to the, the vaccination program though? Is that something that you can actually do overnight or do you have to kind of ease in these different vaccines over time for maximum benefit? So I believe from my understanding is that once a company decides they're going to implement that vaccine, they can just go ahead and put it in their program. It's up to the complex veterinarian and their team to decide what's going to be best for their area. But Now, I know you're new to the industry, but um, it's always good to get some fresh eyes looking at infectious bronchitis. In your estimation, what could the poultry industry be doing better? Oh, wow. There's always room for improvement with management, house management, of course. I want to emphasize that without being critical for bronchitis. Um, figuring out what they're being challenged with in the field and matching their vaccination program with the field challenge and making sure that that vaccine actually is protecting for what they're seeing, I think is going to be critical in this as we go and new new strains evolve and we're not vaccinating for them you can see those take hold and become worse and worse so as we could stay ahead of the game and vaccinate for what we're finding so if we do better at testing and targeting and seeing what we have out there so we can match the program we can potentially help control 
the evolution of these buyers. Abigail, I want to go back to your study. Um, you indicated that it was in Northwest Arkansas. Why that particular area? Yeah, so originally the DMV 1639, which is a serotype of the infectious bronchitis virus, was seen on the East Coast. And in Northwest Arkansas, they started finding it in broilers and it was causing some issues with air sacculitis and in the broiler breeders was causing egg production and egg quality issues. So it, it looks different in Arkansas than it does in Delmarva? Yeah, so surprising, um, it was more a kidney form at first. When the first became the big issue in 2014, 2015, they were seeing the kidney bronchitis, the nephropathogenic form, with some respiratory showing air sac. And then as we're seeing it in Arkansas, it's very rare to see flushing in the houses, and it's more the respiratory and air sacculitis, as well as the uh, decreased egg production and wrinkled eggs. And to my knowledge, there's not a vaccine specifically for 1639, is that right? Correct, yes. So what do you do about that in a situation? You realize that it's, um, it's got a big presence in northwest Arkansas all of a sudden. I mean, do you start calling people on the Delmarva Peninsula and say, well, what did you do? Or do you got to come up with your own solution that is specific to that region? Yeah, I'd say the first thing they did was um, call Delmarva area and say, what do we do with this 1639? I know these bugs can move around quite a bit, but any idea how 1639 got from Delmarva to northwest Arkansas, that's a pretty long way to go. Yeah, I think that's a great question that a lot of people would love to know the answer to that. Um, the main speculation is just fecal contamination of either equipment, people um, traveling from northwest Ar or from the coast to northwest Arkansas, potential eggs that, you know, are being shipped to Arkansas with some fecal contamination is probably the um, number one hypothesis right now. Yeah, you just can't underestimate biosecurity, can right. you? Right. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, well, we've been talking to Abigail Reith. She is now a technical services veterinarian at Zoetis. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me.